Had a great night's sleep last night. Let's go back to the beginning of this trip and see how we got to this point. Thanks for joining along. It was a fun time on the new section of the Northville Placid Trail that goes from Benson Road and connects up by the west branch of Stony Creek. Good morning, America. It's the second weekend in November. Greg Gorilla and I were able to throw together a trip here in the middle of the week. That's becoming a, a habit with you and I, brother. About Tuesday or Wednesday, we talk and then decide to go on a backpacking trip for 24 hours. We're uh, back up here on the Northville Placid Trail. This is a section that just opened up this year. This is the parking lot here on uh, Benson Road. And the trailhead's got a little tiny sign just across the road. So we're going to head off there. It's only about an eight or nine mile hike. And uh, we got more gear than you can shake a stick at. Gorilla's got a half a grocery store worth of food in his backpack. And we're going to go find camp and relax for a little bit. Giddy up and go. Northville Placid Trail. This is the fourth time for me to be on this sucker this year. Life is good. Here's the trail. The trail kind of comes up. You walk away about halfway down the ridge. You got Woods Lake right here to your left. All right, the trail just keeps continuing right around Woods Lake. <clears throat> kind of walking through a, a beach hardwood forest. It's been fun so far. You can't really make out the trail because the tread's not all beat into the ground. And uh, with no leaves and you can tell the woods, the hardwoods is pretty open. You gotta kinda hunt around a little bit, pay attention, and keep your eye out for markers and look for the trail. I like it. A little bit different than walking on a well-established trail. Isn't that neat? It's got to be what, probably 30 feet? Chris and I just crossed that last bridge you saw us, and uh, he, he happened to look back as I was grabbing the camera and noticed two stumps that have bark draped over them. We have absolutely no idea why that is. Oh, look at this. These have been cut down. I wonder if it's to mask. The log's being cut or something. Don't know. Interesting. Anybody knows, let us know. I'll tell you guys right now, this is one meandering, nice, peaceful walk. This is about as pretty a section of woods as I've ever been in. This is a must-do for anybody. I, I've, I've, I'm just finding this incredibly enjoyable. What do you think about it, Grill? Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Yeah, this is nice. There are about 14 billion places you could 
hang up a hammock and spend the night and through here. It's just a gorgeous trail. Whoever marked this one out, well done. This is a nice little meander through the woods. I got it, Chris. All you needed to do was grab the camera. Oh, Gorilla and I are kind of like uh, on a scavenger hunt a few places looking for blue discs. They're there, you just gotta take your time and find them. It's enjoyable. Trailside confession time. Trailside confession well, he time. Pointed at me. He pointed at you. <laughs> all right. All right. So uh, this just... there's good news and there's bad news. I'm gonna give you the good news first. Chris and I are gonna get to a little bit more walking than we planned up today. And here's why. We went up to the Godfrey Road trailhead and we dropped my car off, and then we took a ride back down to the trailhead you saw us at the beginning of the day to take off and uh, and go for a walk. And right as we were getting ready to leave, I said, Chris, I might as well go ahead and leave my keys in your van. So I threw him into his van. We're walking to my car. Well, actually, we're gonna walk to Chris's car now. It's not that long of a trip. It won't take us that long, Chris. Less than an hour. He's consulting the map for you. <laughs> We I tell you, gotta go this far on the map. <laughs> it's three miles to the entire. <laughs> All right. Lesson number one: keep your keys with you. Lesson number two: keep your keys with you. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Chris, I'll uh, get the firewood. And uh, keep the keep the fire going all night long. Let me do the cooking. How about if I set your uh, set your hammock up for you? Why don't you spend the rest of the day just relaxing a little bit? Let me do some of the work. By the way, did you remember that I left my keys in your car? My my my! How things change <laughs> in the course of a couple of miles. <laughs> No longer on our meander through the woods, now we're kind of cruising down an old logging trail. I think that's a little wet that way. Down <laughs> the trail, folks.
All right, here's where the new section connects back to the existing trail. Right here as you cross this bridge. This is the first significant bridge you would normally cross as you were leaving Upper Benson heading this way. Now, instead of doing that, you're going to come down off of that ridge up there, up by the orange flags and head right up where the gray grill is and keep on cranking. That's where it is. That's a great new section. Big long bit of the beginning of it, it's a nice meander. Then you walk along some old logging trails and then eventually end up this last little bit, probably the last mile is the most difficult of it all, but that's a nice section of trail. Gorilla, let's find some place to hang up and get some grub, bub. All right, guys, uh, this is the first trip using the new uh, speed hook from Dutch. I messed around with it in my backyard, and essentially what I've got here is just a continuous loop on the uh, head end of my, uh, or on the uh, end of my hammock, my argon hammock, and then this is the speed hook. I have not slept a night in it yet, but as far as adjustability, it's everything that it's supposed to be. Simple half turn, lock it down, and you're good to go. The thing that's interesting about it is I've got to mess around here with my length of my tree straps. These are six foot huggers, and you can see I've got it doubled up on this end. On my foot end, I bet you I've got it wrapped around about five or six times. It's just too long. Um, you know, these trees are a reasonable distance apart. And I'm really going to be able to get away with a lot shorter tree huggers. It'll be something I've got to experiment with and take a look at it. But as far as these right now, I, uh, I think I'm going to like it. Same thing on the other end. I've just double larks headed this continuous loop with my ridge line. And then there is the attachment. It puts the water break right down here. Again, this is the first trip I'm going to be using them. I just got them uh, in the mail on Thursday, and uh, hopefully I stay up off the of ground. Dutch, I'm counting on you, buddy. I want to stay up and uh, stay high above the ground tonight. So I'm looking forward to this. I just thought I'd show everybody. They were really simple to use. Uh, on tonight's episode of This Old House, we have an outdoorsy two-bedroom place that we'd like to show you. Here's bedroom number one. The decor being the Superfly tarp from More Bonnet Outdoors, the 2Q and ZQ underquilt protector, with a Dutch argon hammock, and our insulation provided by none other than hammock gear. In bedroom number two, the roof is provided by none other than hammock gear, Cuban fiber. We've got a 20 degree Phoenix, a DIY top quilt, it's at about a 20 degree, and a DIY hammock. That's the gorilla's rig. Now we're going to take you down to the kitchen. The kitchen is primarily sponsored by Claussinator. What we've got here, we're going old school with the Trangia. New school with the tree shelf. We got the solo stove all set up, ready to go. A couple of clips to hold the windscreen in place. Cook pot and some alcohol. And moving over to our living room. We're going to set up a little fire ring here. A stool. And we're good to go. This episode 
of this old house is brought to you by Good Old Fun Outdoors and Backpacking Adventures. Sit down, hold on, it's going to be a fun trip. Alright, we got the fire up and going. Alright, now my boys, uh, my boys, Chris, show me, uh, show me what you brought. I brought two cast iron skillets, <laughs> one for my boy and I. Got, good uh, man, good man, a lug cast iron skillets in the woods. <laughs> got some rolls, some hot sausage, some sweet sausage. <laughs> what else we got? Oh, peppers and onions. The good man brings a brick of cheese. Eight ounce brick of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the record, this weighed more than my whole backpack on the first section of the trip. <laughs> some pepperoni and butter. Stick of butter. Some potatoes. <laughs> Macaroni and cheese. That's about it. This is the laundry room. And over there's the kitchen. What you got in the pot? Peppers and onions. Mm, what are that for? Sausage. Mm. How much longer? Mm. I don't really know. The low last night got down to about 32 degrees. I was just starting to wake up this morning, land here, and I started to hear the pitter patter of rain on my tarp. Every other morning when I hear the pitter patter of rain on my tarp, I pull my top quilt up, tuck it in, close my eyes and smile and fall back asleep. This morning all I could think about was now you're really going to have to pay for leaving the keys in the gorilla's rig and having to do that extra two mile walk you big dummy. Well Dutch's speed hooks kept me up off the ground all night long. Not that I ever doubted they wouldn't. He's got some pretty incredible gear that man sells. One thing I did this morning after having it loaded all night long and, and then with all my gear and everything hanging, I did just see how it would be to loosen it back up and do an adjustment and put it back up. And again, another place where I find it's easier than a whoopee sling is because you're so close to the gathered end of your hammock. You're able just to grab onto the gathered end when it comes time to do any adjustments. Whereas with the whoopee sling, you used to have to half pull the gathered end up with your armpit or something and try to unmilk the berry and adjust your whoopee sling. So these are a great piece of gear. I'll have a few more pictures and whatnot and we can check them out, but these are definitely a must try. So it's dutchware.com and it's his speed hooks. He sells them by the pair. You can buy them with the continuous loops. You can buy them with the leads. You can buy them separately. You can buy them with the tree huggers. As always, Dutch has made it real easy. So give them a try if you haven't tried them out yet. They are uh, they're the next latest and greatest in suspension, hammock suspension. Chris, hey. Chris, hey, what are you doing? Shh. 
Don't tell the owner. What are you doing? Oh, this is nice. Is that your first time in the Argon hammock? It is. It's different, isn't it? It feels different, yep. You like it? I like it. I think I do. Comfy. We're almost back to my car. <laughs> we don't have my car keys. This might be the last time you see the old gorilla hiking with me. <laughs> We've been walking for 30 minutes to get back down to Chris's car. Oh. It's a beautiful day for a walk though. You can thank me. That's where I left my keys. We're back, we got them. Now we're gonna double back for my car into packs. Excellent trip. Really glad I got to spend another uh, day and a half or overnight or 24 hours with my buddy Chris, the gray gorilla. Had a ton of fun. This will definitely be the last time I'm gonna be on the Northville Placid Trail this year. Thanks for watching everybody. That was a new section of the Northville Placid Trail from Benson Road around to the West Branch and North Stony Creek. If you get a chance to uh, walk that section, go ahead and do it. I said, Chris, I might as well go ahead and leave my keys in your van.